What's up guys, back with another video. Today I'm going to be taking a look at this original Xbox right here. And what's special about this Xbox is if you take a look at the front, it has what's known as a X3CE control panel modification done to it. And it obviously has this DVD dongle, I could just pull it up to the side. But the main thing is this control panel is not standard. It was quite an expensive mod back in the day, and I've recently just picked this up for £10 in the UK, which is about $12 to $13 in the US. Haven't tested it, don't know if it works. It was sold to me as untested, so the person was just having a clear out, so I thought I'd pick it up. So, yeah, this will be exciting to see whether this thing works or not, or whether I can get it working or just see what goodies are inside. So we're going to flip the console over and there are no screws in any of the six points, but there would be six Torx 20 screws, which you'd need to remove, but they seem to be removed. So just lift off the cover. Struggled a bit there, it's just a bit finicky, so just lift off the top cover, just pop that off to the side, and you can see a 80 gigabyte drive that's upgraded, that's a nice feature to see, and you've got the Samsung DVD drive, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these out, um, again there's no screws holding anything down, but whatever, so I'm going to take them out now. So once you've got the power cables for both the hard drive and the DVD drive unplugged and once you've unplugged both IDE cables you can sort of pop this off to the side, wrap this round there and you should be able to grab by the caddy, the black caddy and just pull the hard drive out, yep, I'll pop that off to the side and same goes to the DVD drive. Once everything's unplugged, just sort of lift it up. And there you go. And this is what we're dealing with here. So, got a handheld for a bit, sorry. So there's the mod chip itself. And I assume this is to do with uh, the bank select switches and the LCD and some of it's to do with USB ports. I'm not, this is very new to me and um, it's a very new experience for me. So I'm sort of learning as I'm going along really. So um, what I'm gonna do now is, yep, the clock capacitor is there and it does look to have leaked the littlest bit if I try and focusing I'm not sure if that is leaking or not that blue stuff there um oh, hang on it's I'm just gonna remove it now I'm not gonna bother taking out the ball because I don't want to mess anything up with the mod chip or anything because I'm not that confident to um sort of start lifting up the board but I um, just wiggle this clock capacitor back and forth so it's shadows. Um, start wiggling this clock capacitor back and forth. Shit it is. Break free. Twist it a bit as well. Go around in a circular motion as well. There you go, that's broken off. And uh, I don't think have a look off camera. Yeah, it has leaked the tiniest bit. Um but at least it hasn't gone further up the board because I taken one apart the other day and the clock has to leak to about like up here and it was really bad. It was really badly damaged and it wouldn't turn on. 
I had to clean it up properly to even get it to boot and yeah so it's definitely worth taking out these clock capacitors um you will i mean with this one it doesn't really matter because with a modified dashboard it won't ask you to put in the time every single time you boot up but if you have a stock dash then it will ask you to input the time every time you turn the xbox on but yeah it's much better to do that rather than have your whole xbox die so what i'm going to do then is i'm just going to clean this up and i'll be back with you in a sec okay so i've cleaned it up the best i can the corrosion on the um clock capacitor but as you can see this xbox is absolutely filthy um take a look at the underside all in there it's pretty disgusting so um yeah it's just thick dump dust clumps so what i'm going to do then is i'm going to go outside blow this out with compressed air and then i can get a better look at the board to see if anything else needs any work doing to it right so i've now blown out the fans and stuff like that as best as i could really um with compressed air it's still a bit dusty here and there mainly on the plastics but what i'll do once this is pretty much nearly all together i'll give all the plastics a good wipe make sure all the dust is off them so now i'll put this off to the side and we'll bring in this dvd drive because like i said this is all untested i don't know whether this works or not um and giving it the best chance it'll work um would mean i just need to clean the laser and make sure if like all the gears and stuff are running right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take this disk drive out of this black caddy here like so and then you'll see one two three four screws which you'll need to remove Okay, so once you've removed those four screws, you can simply lift off this top cover. Um, looking at the front, not sure if you'll be able to see that, but it's really dusty and it's just horrible. And if I try and focus in, yeah, you can see it there. It's not in the nicest of conditions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this top cover and then I'm going to take it outside and give it a careful blast off. I say careful because obviously there's parts like a laser and stuff like that. So you've got to be careful around that. And, um, well, actually it doesn't look too bad. I've seen Xbox disk drives where the dust is literally on top of the laser and people wonder why these have disk read issues. I mean, it is fairly dusty, but it's not as bad as I thought, judging from the outside. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to clean the laser and I'm going to blow the dust out and I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. I think another good thing to do just before I do clean it all is to, you see there's a, this is different on some disk drives, but with this disk drive, there's a white sort of piece of plastic. I can push that in with something like a screwdriver and um, push it in far enough the disk drive should come out like that and it reveals this band and some people have sticky drive issues or disk drives not ejecting not going back in properly and it's most likely to do with this band so what i'm going to do is i'm going to replace this with a brand new band and just to make sure that this is all in tip top condition okay so now i've cleaned the laser and replaced the drive band this is the old one and as you can see it's sort of more egg shaped rather than circle shaped so this wouldn't work right and it probably would give you a um, sticky draw so now i'm just going to put the screws back in and put it all back together okay so now once i've put all the drive back together i can put that off to the side and bring back the xbox itself and start putting it back together so first step is to grab your dvd drive and let me shuffle this up so you guys can see it a bit better there you go all right so grab the dvd drive and 
you can do this multiple ways. You can either plug the cables into it and then slot it down or slot it down and then plug the cables into it. I sort of plug the cables into it and then slot it down, but I do it um, basically like this. So pop the cables in, plug the IDE cable, place the IDE cables in place. I can just simply place the DVD drive down. Like so. Yep, I think that's placed down. Nice. And then we can grab the hard drive caddy. And remember these, um, the wires route through this little gap here. There's a little opening there and they just root into there. So what I like to do is I used to like to root the cables and then place it in. So once the cables are all rooted, then make sure the cables aren't in the way of the um, screw holes. And it's a bit finicky this one. There you go. Right, that's in place now. So you can now plug the power in for the hard drive. Sort of dim it off camera, yep. It's over there. Power's plugged in, and then you can plug the ID cable in. Bit finicky to get in. Sorry guys, I'll just do this off camera. Okay, that was a bit of a challenge, but it's fine. So I've now plugged the ID cables in. I can grab the Xbox top. Um, I'm just gonna quickly give this a blast out and I'll be back. Okay, so now I've cleaned up a little bit more, the dust has gone. So what you wanna do is you just wanna place it on top. line everything up it's a bit difficult with this extra power in right that's not on properly I don't oh Right side that isn't on properly. All right, again, I'll do this off camera. Right, okay, so I've got the panel on now. Um, I'm going to plug this in and test if it works. Okay, here it is in all its dusty glory. I will clean this up. I just want to make sure that this does work and um, rather than cleaning or polishing a turd, basically. <laughs> oh, it's a bit more than a turd, but you know. So black screen at the moment, haven't turned it on, haven't tried it. The previous one it had dip switches two, three and four on, not one. Um, didn't have the protect switch on, so let's see what we get. Well, let me just plug in the controller first and see what we get. Right. Okay. Now, I have got another modified Xbox here and that was just doing the same thing yesterday and it was something to do with the mod chip. So if I turn this off, if I undo all these. Right, 
Oh, it's in the water. I don't know. I hit the eject. Orange light. Nothing on screen. Nothing. Alright, nothing up on screen, I just changed the lights off. Nothing on screen. Try and turn it off. Let me just do number two. Screen's not doing anything. Um No, oh, this drive fully works with that band. But why is this not? I wonder because I can't even get it to the normal Microsoft dashboard. If I undo all these switches, um, okay, guys, just fiddling off camera, and turns out the dip switches were set wrong. Um, that's awesome. It turns out the dip switches were set to two, three, and four. Let me focus for you. It was set to two, three, and four, and they're actually just one and two. So if I turn this on now. Xbox. Excuse me, what's on my box? BMC and get like some <laughs> ACV sort of thing. Um, that's awesome. So let me just plug in a controller, make sure the control ports work. Yep, yeah, that's awesome. That's absolutely amazing. Now it does look very blurry. I mean, to you it probably looks okay, but to me it looks very blurry. Um, information. System info. Yeah, because it was running at NTSC. Clock says 2004. Um, that's absolutely awesome. So I'm going to clean this thing up and then show you guys the final result. Okay guys, so fast forward a few days now. I haven't cleaned it up just yet. Um, I've been playing around with this, making sure it all works. I've now got the Unleash X dashboard on here. Um, I've installed a few games. And yeah, it all seems to be working fine. The only thing... That's a bit sort of worrying to me, is the screen at the front here is very dim. And even on XBMC, I've tried to change the brightness of it, because there's a setting you can change. You can adjust the brightness of the LCD screen at the front. 
and I set it to 100% and it's still not right so I'm not sure if the backlight's dying or what because it should sort of be the brightness of that like that excuse logo there but it's not you can, you can see it fine in the dark but in a lit room it's sort of a bit hard to see so um, what I'm going to do now is as you see I'm just on the dashboard I'm going to take this part again and replace the thermal paste on both the CPU and the GPU make sure they're all alright because obviously old thermal paste isn't going to be the best sort of uh, heat conductive and it sort of gives you um, lesser temperatures um, so I'm just going to replace the thermal paste and then once I've done that I'm going to put all the screws in out of one of our parts xboxes I'm going to put the three screws in with the hard drive and DVD caddy and then I'm going to put the six screws underneath the case clean it all up and that should be it and then I can pop this up on the shelf with all the other consoles and have this my main Xbox so stay tuned for that so I've been playing this Xbox for about 20 25 minutes now and as you can see the CPU temperature has reached 50 degrees and the motherboard temperature is 47 and um, this is before the replacement of the thermal paste so this give me a clear indication whether or not the new thermal paste has actually made a difference which it should do but um, yeah so let's get on with the install okay so I'm back at the workbench so all you need to do is take off this top cover of the Xbox it's a bit of a tough one this one because everything's so sort of Compact with the new face plate, so that's now off. And then we can unplug the ID drive or the ID cable. Sorry, unplug the hard drive power. Oh, I'm gonna do this off camera, I'm just gonna take out all the cables. Okay, so once I've done that, you can then undo the heat sinks on both the CPU and the GPU. So what you wanna do is you wanna pull this lever up and there'll be like a catch on both sides and you can sort of pry the catch and at the same time um, lift off this plastic piece and a very similar thing for the other heat sink. So just do that. Okay guys, I ended up just getting a hairdryer and uh, giving it a bit of heat over the GPU heatsink and it came free. And then the other heatsink, you just had that little bar there. So what I'm gonna do now is clean up the thermal pads. Sorry, I'm using a glove. Clean up the GPU thermal pad. I'm using a glove because it's still extremely hot from the hairdryer. Um, what I'm going to be using is ice purple alcohol and a few cotton buds and just cleaning the heatsink itself and the motherboard like the chips like making sure there's no more thermal paste on there so I'm just going to do that now okay so your CPU and GPU should look something a bit like that where all the thermal paste has been removed same goes with the heat sinks and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you me um like once the thermal paste has been applied i'm going to apply it off camera so i can, can concentrate a bit better and get a better view but i'll show you what it looks like okay so i just used some mx4 compound and this is the first time i've ever applied thermal paste to chip so it looks a bit messy especially on that one but should do the job so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put the heatsink and uh, clips back on okay so i've put the heat sinks on it's fairly simple just simply lay it down and give it a tiny bit of wiggle 
on both chips just to sort of spread the thermal compound and then put the clips on and now I'm just going to install the fan on the GPU. Okay, so now I've installed the fan that's firmly in place. Now I can start putting the thing back together. So I'm going to grab my DVD drive, put in the IDE cable, and put in the power cable as well, like so, and then just slot it into place. One can be a bit finicky. There you go, so that's all in place now. And now I'm going to grab the hard drive, plug the power into it. This power's in place, and now I'm going to route the cables through this little hole again. It's a bit finicky trying to run these wires through. So I think that is done. Okay, so now I'm just going to sit down the um, hard drive. I tend to, pref I prefer to do the back, sit the back down first and then put um, pressure on the front. Sort of sit it down. Um, There you go, all sorted. Right, so now I'm going to route the cables under these little cable tidies here. Okay, so they're under. Now I'm going to connect the ID cable. It's the one that I had trouble with last time. <laughs> There you go, so that's all in place. I think I've lifted up the back here because that's pointing up the cell. There you go, everything's in place now. So, what I'm going to do before I put this back together, I'm going to test it out and then put the three screws in there, there and there, just to secure down the DVD drive. have dug out some screws from one of my parts, parts Xboxes, and these are small Torx T10 screws, which you'll need to put there under the, or oh, let me focus, there under the ID cable, there and in there so i'm just going to pop them in now okay so those screws are now in place so one of the last things we've got to do is grab this xbox top and slide it on top So what you need to do now is flip the console over and like I said at the beginning of the video there's one two three four five six screws which will need a Torx 10 screwdriver and these uh, screws these screws itself are very long so 
yeah, I'm just gonna put them in now. Okay, so now all six screws are in. All that needs to be done is to give this thing a really good exterior clean. So I'm gonna do that now. So that's it, it's all cleaned up, all wiped down. Um, most of the dust has got off of it very nice. Um, the state of, that used to be white. It's now, yeah, so just shows you how much of the dirt's actually come off this thing. But, so what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go back to the setup, plug it in, make sure it all works. Pe uh, play a game for about 20-25 minutes like I did before, read the temperatures and put it on my shelf with all my other gaming stuff and have this as my main Xbox, so yeah. Okay, so I've got it all plugged in, the only thing left to do now is to fire it up, so let's do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a game for about 20 minutes and come back to you when I've done that. So I've been playing the Xbox for about 20 minutes now, everything seems to be working fine, absolutely perfectly. So if I turn this off and back on, let's see the temperatures. I'm not too bothered if they're pretty much similar to what they were before, it's just sort of the pace needed to be replaced regardless of whether I wanted to improve temperatures or not. So let's see. It's only 47, but it might go up. Yeah, there you go. 49, so it's about the same as what it was before, which before I managed to get it up to 50, I think it was 50. Um, not on video, I managed to get 50. Um, just while playing normally without recording so yeah I mean it's very similar but the pace needs to re be replaced regardless of whether it improved temperatures or not um, so yeah that really concludes this video I don't think there's much else to say other than it was a bargain really I mean £10 or about 12 US dollars for uh, an Xbox regardless of whether it's modded or not is still a good deal and this just happened to have the Executor 3 um, mod chip and control panel which made it even more of a bargain so um, yeah I hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did please hit like and get subscribed this is my, one of my first videos like this so Sorry if I'm a bit sort of here, there, everywhere with everything. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll bring you more videos like this in the future. So thank you for watching and catch you again soon.